Let's groove into the soulful world of Gladys Knight, a shining star in Motown's galaxy of female artists in the late 60s and early 70s. At the heart of Gladys Knight and the Pips, a musical family affair from Atlanta, she paved the way to stardom. Despite her musical triumphs, Gladys Knight faced the heartache of failed marriages. Join us today to uncover the captivating tale of Gladys Knight as we unravel the journey of this extraordinary artist filled with highs, lows, and soulful melodies that resonate through the ages. The Life of Gladys Knight Before we continue, let's talk about the life of Gladys Knight and how she navigated through challenges right from an early age. Gladys Maria Knight, who is frequently referred to as the Empress of Soul, was born on May 28, 1944. She is a well-known American singer, songwriter, actor, and businesswoman who has left an indelible influence on the world of music and entertainment. Her legacy will go on forever. Throughout her distinguished career, which has spanned several decades, Gladys Knight has been honored with a great deal of acclaim and distinction. The fact that she was the lead singer of the family group Gladys Knight and the Pips which also included her brother Merrill Bubba Knight and her cousins William Guest and Edward Patton, is considered to be one of her most notable accomplishments. Together, they left behind a musical legacy that continues to reverberate to this day. Despite the fact that she was successful in her career, Gladys Knight's journey through marriage was filled with instances of both happiness and difficulty. During her lifetime, she was married four times and gave birth to three children. She also had three biological children. She was just 16 years old when she discovered she was pregnant, and in 1960 she made the decision to marry James Jimmy Newman, a singer from Atlanta who was also a classmate of hers. A miscarriage occurred during this time period, which was a terrible tragedy for her. In spite of this early setback, the couple went on to begin their family with the birth of two children, the fact that Newman struggled with drug addiction, which finally resulted in him abandoning the family when Gladys Knight was just 20 years old, was a big obstacle for their marriage, which was already experiencing significant difficulties. It is remarkable that they managed to stay married for more than a decade till 1973, despite the turbulent times they were going through. In the course of their marriage, they became parents to a son who was born on August 13th 1962, and was given the name James Jimmy Gaston Newman III. Gladys Knight took the bold decision to temporarily break away from her music career in the midst of the challenges that they were facing. Despite the fact that her family's musical group, The Pips, continued to travel separately, she decided to retire from performing on the road in order to concentrate on raising their own children. Gladys Knight and James Newman welcomed the birth of their only daughter, Kenya Maria Newman, in November of 1963. Kenya was their only child altogether. Eventually, Gladys Knight was able to return to her passion for recording and performing with the Pips, which she had previously pursued due to the duties of motherhood and the desire to provide for her ever-expanding family. To begin a new phase of their lives, Gladys, James, and the Pips moved to Detroit in the early 1960s. This move marked the beginning of a new chapter in their lives. They chose to make their home in the exclusive Sherwood Forest area, which is situated on Sherborne Road and is situated on the west side of Detroit. During the time that Gladys Knight lived on LaSalle Avenue, she made certain that her children attended Gesso Catholic Grade School. This would ensure that they received an education of the highest possible caliber. After experiencing a separation that lasted for seven years, Gladys Knight made the difficult decision to divorce James Newman in 1973. The divorce was a difficult decision to make because the difficulties in their marriage continued. His untimely death, which occurred a few years after the couple had divorced, was a tragic event that marked the conclusion of a turbulent period in her personal life. 
After the difficulties she experienced in her first marriage, Gladys Knight was able to find love once more and wed Barry Hankerson in the year 1974 in the city of Detroit. Blackground Records was founded by Barry Hankerson, who was also the originator of the label. It was Blackground Records that would later sign his niece, Alia, who was a great R&B singer, to a record deal. A son named Shanga Ali Hankerson was brought into the world on August 1, 1976, and Gladys and Barry were the proud parents of this child. The pair's path through marriage, on the other hand, was not without its share of challenges. Around the year 1977, the couple made the decision to relocate to Atlanta, but the Pips, the musical group that Gladys was a member of, continued to reside in Detroit. Regrettably, Gladys Knight's marriage to Barry Hankerson was plagued by significant difficulties, and it was finally the year 1979 that brought about its dissolution. A further layer of complexity was added to her personal life as a result of the separation, which resulted in a protracted and emotionally exhausting custody battle for their son. The kidnapping of Gladys Knight's son, Shanga Ali Hankerson, in 1979 was yet another instance of tragedy. She was so distraught by the absence of her child that she spared no effort or expense in her hunt for him, and she spent more than a million dollars in her dogged pursuit of him. In the midst of the ups and downs that occurred in her personal life, Gladys Knight found herself in a second marriage in the year 1995. This time, she was married to Les Brown, a motivational speaker. On the other hand, the difficulties that life offered continued to have an effect on her relationships. And in 1997, she and Les Brown eventually divorced and separated from one another. Financial Setback and Gambling Addiction One of the challenges that Gladys Knight faced along her journey was a fight against gambling addiction that lasted for more than a decade. She was able to secure employment at the Baccarat table in the late 1980s despite the fact that she had suffered a substantial financial setback in the form of a loss of $60,000 in a single night. When she was confronted with the truth about her addiction, she made the brave decision to seek assistance and joined Gamblers Anonymous. This was the first step that ultimately assisted her in escaping the shackles of her addiction, Gladys' spiritual evolution. Throughout the course of her life, Gladys Knight went through a process of spiritual development in the past, she had described herself as a Baptist. Nevertheless, she eventually converted to the Catholic faith. The year 1997 was a significant turning point in her spiritual journey when she became a member of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, also known as the LDS. Following the departure of her son and daughter from the Catholic faith in order to become members of the LDS Church, she made this decision, which is commonly referred to as religion. Particularly noteworthy is the fact that Gladys Knight's participation in the LDS Church resulted in several humorous exchanges with Gordon B. Hinckley, the head of the LDS Church. In a comical manner, she advised that the LDS congregation should inject some energy into their singing. She was taken aback when President Hinckley gave his consent. This ultimately resulted in the founding of the Saints Unified Voices Gospel Music Choir, which went on to win a Grammy Award. Furthermore, Gladys Knight assumed a leadership role and led the B1 Choir during the B140th anniversary celebration of the Revelation on the Priesthood. This event was held in honor of the Revelation. Jimmy Newman's Death Gladys Knight's son, Jimmy Newman, was instrumental in the management of her career throughout a crucial era of her career. Through his company, Newman Management, Inc., he contributed significantly to the management of her career. Nevertheless, a terrible event occurred on July 10, 1999, when Jimmy Newman went away due to heart failure. He was only 36 years old at the time of his death. The untimely passing of the individual had a significant effect on the family. Jimmy Newman's wife, Micheline, and their children, including daughters Nastasia and Gabrielle, as well as sons Rishon, Stefan, and Sterling, are among those who are left behind after his passing. Gladys Knight and her family went through a period that was both emotionally taxing and difficult as a result of this loss. A new ray of hope. She marked the beginning of a new era in her personal life, 
when Gladys Knight tied the knot with William McDowell in the year 2001. This event marked the beginning of a new phase. By virtue of their marriage, the couple was able to bring their respective families together, which ultimately led to the formation of a large and extended family. Having a combined total of 17 grandchildren and 10 great-grandchildren, Gladys and William have established a family network that is not only close-knit, but also full of vitality. Fairview, North Carolina, was the location where the couple chose to construct their home, and it was there that they created a connection to the town. If we are being more particular, they were the owners of a significant property in Asheville, which was the site of the former Reynolds High School property. The objective of this building is to serve as a community center so that they may demonstrate their commitment to the neighborhood in which they reside. At the same time that she was actively involved in her personal life, Gladys Knight continued to be a fervent advocate for a variety of important causes. In the year 2017, she took part in a fundraising event that was held at the Palace Theatre and was co-hosted by Carol Ann Riddell and Alan Coulter. The event was staged in support of a charitable organization. The Children's Learning Centers of Fairfield County, which is an institution that is of the utmost significance, were able to successfully raise $400,000 through the event. Resilience, family, and Gladys Knight's unshakable commitment to have a positive impact on the world as a whole have been the defining characteristics of the journey that Gladys Knight has made. The fact that she is able to traverse the highs and lows of life with grace and purpose is a testament to her enduring spirit. And she accomplishes this via both the humanitarian work that she does and the music that she creates. Gladys Knight's accomplished career. Gladys Knight and the Pips were able to release a succession of successes that enthralled audiences all over the world throughout the decades of the 1960s, 1970s, and 1988. As a result of their powerful vocals and deep harmonies, they became a well-known band. In particular, they were successful in recording two singles that reached number one on the Billboard Hot 100 chart, Midnight Train to Georgia and That's What Friends Are For. Specifically, the latter was a joint effort between the legendary musician Gladys Knight and the band The Pips. The impact that Gladys Knight had on the globe was demonstrated by her career. The trio not only had singles that topped the charts, but they also had an astounding total of 11 R&B singles that reached number one and six albums. That reached number one in the R&B charts. The fact that they have achieved such incredible success is a representation of their enduring talent and outstanding musical ability. As a result of her contributions to the music industry, Gladys Knight has been awarded seven Grammys, four of which she has received as a solo artist and three of which she has received with the Pips. Because of her extraordinary artistic ability and vocal talent, she has firmly established herself as one of the most recognized artists in the history of the world. In addition, the Grammy Hall of Fame has recognized the historical and artistic value of two of her iconic songs, I Heard It Through the Grapevine and Midnight Train to Georgia. Both of these songs have been inducted over the years. Gladys Knight's influence extends beyond the domain of music and into other areas of the entertainment industry, where she has been successful. Her versatility as an artist was demonstrated by the fact that she did the recording of the theme song for the James Bond film, License to Kill which was released in 1989. It is a testament to her everlasting effect on the music industry that Rolling Stone magazine decided to acknowledge her as one of the 100 greatest singers of all time. Gladys Knight has been awarded notable accolades, such as the National Medal of Arts and the Kennedy Center Honors, as well as the Hall of Fame and the Hall of Fame, in recognition of the significant contributions she has made to the arts. It is a remarkable testimonial to her capacity to express oneself in the realm of music that she has been awarded the Nobel Prize in Music at the same time. Not only has she been honored with a Nobel Prize in Music and the National Opera, but she has also been honored with an award for the job that she has done in singing, as well as for the magnificent performance that she has given on the piano and the guitar. In addition, she is, together with the other members of the Pips, a prestigious inductee into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame as well as the vocal group Hall of Fame, Gladys Knight's Business Ventures, Shanga Hankerson, 
Knight Sun, is the owner of a chain of chicken and waffles restaurants in Atlanta that bears Princess Knight's name. Within the greater Atlanta area, Gladys Knight and Ron Winnan's Chicken and Waffles is now open in three different locations. The Travel Channel original series Man V Food featured a single area as a featured destination. Authorities in Georgia conducted raids on two of the restaurants and the headquarters of the company in June of 2016. Reports from USB TV in 2016 indicated that Hankerson was the subject of an inquiry over taxes, penalties, and interest that had not been paid. The Chief of Special Investigations for the Georgia Department of Revenue, Jeff Mitchell, stated to the station that the probe was just about Hankerson and not about Knight. Gladys Knight's Early Life Gladys Maria Knight was born in Atlanta to her parents, Merrill Woodlow Knight Sr., who worked as a postal worker, and Sarah Elizabeth Kneewoods. She grew up alongside her siblings, including a sister named Brenda and a brother named Merrill Booba Knight Jr. Unfortunately, they also faced the loss of another brother, David Billy Knight. Gladys Knight's musical journey began at a young age. During the late 1940s and early 1950s, she discovered her love for singing while participating in her church choir, where her remarkable talent first began to shine. Her incredible vocal abilities soon caught the attention of a wider audience when she achieved a significant milestone at the tender age of eight. On July 1, 1952, she triumphed on Ted Mack's The Original Amateur Hour TV Show Contest, a remarkable achievement that foreshadowed her future as a music legend. Notably, the formation of the iconic group Gladys Knight, Amp the Pips, was rooted in a serendipity. It was a serendipitous event during Booba's 10th birthday party. The group's inception was an indirect result of a record player malfunction, which prompted Gladys, her brother Bubba, sister Brenda, and their cousins Eleanor and William Guest to perform together. The Pips. As a result of a spontaneous performance at Bubba's birthday, they came to the conclusion that they should establish a formal group. Elizabeth Knight, Gladys's mother, was a strong supporter of this choice. As a result of deriving inspiration from the nickname of their cousin James Pip Woods, the group ultimately decided to call themselves the Pips. During the course of honing their musical abilities, they began taking part in talent events in Atlanta, where they were born and raised, and they won these competitions on a consistent basis. Their accomplishments attracted the attention of experts working in the music industry, which ultimately resulted in a record contract being signed with Brunswick Records in the year 1957. Due to the fact that they did not attain chart success at that time, the group issued two recordings while they were performing at Brunswick. Despite this, they started to rise to prominence by performing as opening acts for well-known R&B acts like Jackie Wilson and Sam Cooke. Despite this, they started to rise to prominence by performing as opening acts for well-known R&B acts like Jackie Wilson and Sam Cooke. Despite the initial difficulties, the group persisted with their journey. Brenda Knight and Eleanor Guest decided to quit the pips and focus on starting families after their contract with Brunswick Records was terminated in 1959. In an effort to fill the void, they were open to accepting new members into the group. A second cousin, Edward Patton, and a friend, Langston George, were among the new members. With this breakthrough, the band embarked on a legendary career that would change the face of soul music forever. The year 1961 marked the beginning of a pivotal era in Gladys Knight and the Pips' musical career. One of the songs they recorded was Every Beat of My Heart, penned by Johnny Otis. At the time, the band lacked a record label that could promote their music. Luckily, a little Atlanta label called Huntum Records stepped up to the plate to back their cause and managed to secure a distribution deal with VJ Records to distribute the song. They uprooted their lives and moved to New York to try out for Fury Records, Bobby Robinson's record label. Their breakthrough single, Every Beat of My Heart, was becoming more popular, but they soon realized they weren't getting their fair share of the money. 
In light of the circumstances, Robinson decided to re-record the song with the Pips and release it under the Fury Records label. This strategic move allowed both versions of the song to break through to the Billboard charts. The Huntum VJ cover of Every Beat of My Heart achieved this remarkable feat by reaching number six on the Billboard Hot 100 chart. Concurrent with their meteoric rise to stardom, the group rebranded themselves as Gladys Knight and the Pips. Late in 1961, while the group's fame was growing, they wrote and recorded the song Letter Full of Tears. Another top 40 smash in early 1962, this song went on to become another hit. The band maintained its upward trajectory after releasing multiple singles on the Fury Records label. Also present at the event in 1962 was Langston George, who departed in 1962. That same year, Gladys Knight decided to step away from the ensemble so she and her husband, musician Jimmy Newman, could start a baby. The departure of Gladys Knight was important, however noticeable, because she had been a member of the ensemble for almost 10 years. The departure of Gladys Knight was important, however noticeable, because she had been a member of the ensemble for almost 10 years. The departure of Gladys Knight was important, however noticeable, because she had been a member of the ensemble for almost 10 years. Had a brief stint before returning to the fold in 1964. Had a brief stint before returning to the fold in 1964. A new chapter began for the band when they signed with Larry Maxwell's Max label, thanks to this momentous reunion that occurred along their musical journey. They collaborated with producer Van McCoy on a string of smash tunes that came out under the Max label. Published during their tenure with Max label, those songs not only marked the beginning of Gladys Knight and the Pip's illustrious career, but also showcased the development of their sound. Even though Gladys Knight and the Pips did not have a certain hit at the time, they nevertheless joined the Motown Records roster in 1966. This was the turning point in their professional journey. Although the label first saw them as a secondary group due to their relative obscurity, they went on to accomplish remarkable success with a series of modest singles. The legendary Diana Ross and the Supremes invited Gladys Knight and the Pips who were just starting out in their career with Motown to open for them on tour. According to Gladys Knight's memoirs, Diana Ross chose to remove them from the tour because of the tremendous applause that Knight's sincere performance received, which was significantly greater than Ross's performance. After some time had gone, Motown Records boss cautioned Knight that her performance was significantly outshining his headline act. They took a pivotal step when, in 1973, they chose to negotiate a more lucrative contract with Buddha Records rather than Motown Records. Their career took a shift during this time, and they went on to even bigger things in the mainstream. The Grammy-winning rendition of Midnight Train to Georgia received a perfect score on both the pop and R and B charts, respectively, and was one of many chart-topping smashes in 1973. Numerous songs such as I've Got to Use My Imagination, The Way We Were Try to Remember, and Best Thing That Ever Happened to Me, helped them maintain their winning streak. The film Claudine's score was created in the summer of 1974 by the legendary producer Curtis Mayfield in collaboration with Gladys Knight and the Pips. Songs like On and On, The Makings of You, and Make Yours a Happy Home were prominently featured on this soundtrack. An ardent European audience, especially in the UK, revered their abilities. Many of their Buddha singles were popular in the UK even though they were first released in the US. This was usually quite a while after the fact. As an example, Midnight Train to Georgia set a record that remained for three years when it debuted at number five on the UK singles chart in the summer of 1976. Following its early success in the US, this is happening. Legal issues meant that as the late 1970s drew near, Gladys Knight and the Pips had to record their music separately. Ultimately, Gladys Knight's first solo double album came from this development, which caused a major shift in their careers. Miss Gladys Knight was released in 1978 by Buddha Records, 
while Gladys Knight was released in 1979 by Columbia Records. Another divorce? In the midst of these advances in her musical career, Gladys Knight also went through changes in her personal life. Immediately after her divorce from James Newman II in 1973, she moved into a marriage with Barry Hankerson, who also happened to be the uncle of Aaliyah, who would go on to become a hip-hop and R&B sensation in the future. At the time, Barry Hankerson was serving as the executive assistant to the mayor of Detroit, Coleman Young. On August 1, 1976, Gladys Knight and Barry Hankerson became parents to a son whom they called Shanga Ali. This event occurred over the course of their marriage. Nevertheless, their relationship was not devoid of difficulties, as they found themselves in the middle of a contentious custody fight for their son, Shanga Ali, which added a layer of complication to their personal lives during this time period. Shanga Ali's death. Their son, Shanga Ali, was murdered by a guy named Johnny Mathis in 1980, marking a key turning point in the career of Gladys Knight and the Pips. Shanga Ali was the Pips' son. In the beginning, Johnny Mathis invited Gladys Knight to work with him on two duets. The first duet was When a Child is Born, which Mathis had previously made famous, and the second duet was The Lord's Prayer. This was the beginning of the Pips. The group experienced a moment of great significance as a result of their collaboration. Signing with Columbia Record. A smart decision was made by Gladys Knight and the Pips when they signed a recording contract with Columbia Records. This change allowed the band to return to its more traditional quartet configuration. And it also marked the beginning of their new career in the music industry. They enlisted the help of Nicholas Ashford and Valerie Simpson who had been producers for Modown before, to infuse their new material with life. The band's initial two albums under the Columbia Records banner were 1980's About Love and 1981's Touch. The band's recent string of successful singles, including Landlord from the album About Love, has been well received by listeners. During this time, the Pips reached a pinnacle of their creative powers. The band's recent string of successful singles, including Landlord from the album About Love, has been well received by listeners, coming back for the group. In 1983, Gladys Knight and the Pips released the hit single, Save the Overtime for Me, further cementing their impact on the music industry. In 1983, this album came out. Thanks to the song's distinctive deep boogie sound, Leon Silvers III gained a lot of fame, the record achieved considerable popularity, reaching a peak of hash 66 on the Hot 100 chart. His contributions to Shalimar's singles are what brought him the most fame. Conversely, the R&B chart was where it really shone, as it had a single recording that topped the charts for a week in the middle of 1983. The trio had not achieved a number one R&B hit since 1974. Thus, this was a major success for them. Among the earliest R&B videos that incorporate hip-hop elements, the one that accompanied Save the Overtime for me stands out. For this reason, it is an important musical composition. This groundbreaking single was released as part of their album Visions, which further showcased their talent. The album also had another R&B hit, Your No One, which is my personal favorite, further establishing their enduring fame. Since it marked a change in her narrative, Gladys Knight's 1987 decision to pursue a career as a solo artist was a major step forward. The 1987 album, All Our Love, which she and the Pips recorded together for MCA Records, was their last collaboration. One of the album's most popular tracks, Love Overboard, became a smashing R&B hit and eventually peaked at number one. The trio's impressive resume was further augmented with the addition of another Grammy Award, which was given to them in acknowledgement of their accomplishments. As a result of a fruitful tour in 1988, Gladys Knight and the Pips began their individual career. Afterwards, they decided to retire as a group, ending a period of incredible music and performances. Following her phenomenal success both with the trio and as a solo artist, Gladys Knight decided to launch her solo career with renewed vigor and commitment. 
The immortal imprint that Gladys Knight and the Pips made on the record books guarantees that their legacy will endure for all time. Their numerous achievements in the music industry led to their induction into three halls of fame. The Rock and Roll Hall of Fame in 1996, the Georgia Music Hall of Fame in 1989, and the Vocal Group Hall of Fame in 2001. In 1985, while still a member of the Pips, Gladys Knight collaborated with Dionne Warwick, Stevie Wonder, and Elton John on the iconic AIDS benefit record, making a critical contribution to the effort to raise awareness about the disease. For this reason, we cultivate friendships. This critically acclaimed triple number hit did more than just raise awareness. It also took home the trophy for best pop performance by a duo or group with vocal instrumentation at the Grammys. Knight performed in the 1986 HBO special Sisters in the Name of Love with Dionne Warwick, Patti LaBelle, and herself the next year. This program was made to highlight the incredible vocal talents of these three incredible artists. Her rendition of America the Beautiful at WrestleMania IV, which was held in Atlantic City, New Jersey on March 27, 1988, was truly remarkable. She showed her versatility as a performer even more in this show. Gladys Knight's musical abilities were finally able to flourish in 1989 when she sang the title theme for the James Bond film License to Kill, which was based on the same name. The fact that this song peaked at number 10 in Germany and the UK only served to further solidify her international fame. Released in 1991, Good Woman was Knight's third solo album and a major step forward in her solo career. On top of topping the R&B album chart, the album also featured the number two R&B single, Men. With a peak position of hash 45 on Billboard's main album chart, this album became her highest charting solo effort to that point. In the year 2017, she took part in a fundraising event that was held at the Palace Theater and was co-hosted by Carol Ann Riddell and Alan Coulter. The event was staged in support of a charitable organization, the Children's Learning Centers of Fairfield County, which is an institution that is of the utmost significance, were able to successfully raise $400,000 through the event. Resilience, family, and Gladys Knight's unshakable commitment to have a positive impact on the world as a whole have been the defining characteristics of the journey that Gladys Knight has made. The fact that she is able to traverse the highs and lows of life with grace and purpose is a testament to her enduring spirit, and she accomplishes this via both the humanitarian work that she does and the music that she creates. Gladys Knight's accomplished career. Gladys Knight and the Pips were able to release a succession of successes that enthralled audiences all over the world throughout the decades of the 1960s, 1970s, and 1988. As a result of their powerful vocals and deep harmonies, they became a well-known band. In particular, they were successful in recording two singles that reached number one on the Billboard Hot 100 chart, Midnight Train to Georgia and That's What Friends Are For. Specifically, the latter was a joint effort between the legendary musician Gladys Knight and the band The Pips. The impact that Gladys Knight had on the globe was demonstrated by her career. The trio not only had singles that topped the charts, but they also had an astounding total of 11 R&B singles that reached number one in six albums that reached number one in the R&B charts. The fact that they have achieved such incredible success is a representation of their enduring talent and outstanding musical ability. As a result of her contributions to the music industry, Gladys Knight has been awarded seven Grammys four of which she has received as a solo artist, and three of which she has received with the Pips. Because of her extraordinary artistic ability and vocal talent, she has firmly established herself as one of the most recognized artists in the history of the world. In addition, the Grammy Hall of Fame has recognized the historical and artistic value of two of her iconic songs, I Heard It Through the Grapevine and Midnight Train to Georgia. Both of these songs have been inducted over the years. Gladys Knight's influence extends beyond the domain of music and into other areas of the entertainment industry where she has been successful.
Her versatility as an artist was demonstrated by the fact that she did the recording of the theme song for the James Bond film, License to Kill, which was released in 1989. It is a testament to her everlasting effect on the music industry that Rolling Stone magazine decided to acknowledge her as one of the 100 greatest singers of all time. Gladys Knight has been awarded notable accolades, such as the National Medal of Arts and the Kennedy Center Honors, as well as the Hall of Fame and the Hall of Fame in recognition of the significant contributions she has made to the arts. It is a remarkable testimonial to her capacity to express oneself in the realm of music that she has been awarded the Nobel Prize in Music at the same time. Not only has she been honored with the Nobel Prize in Music and the National Opera, but she has also been honored with an award for the job that she has done in singing, as well as for the magnificent performance that she has given on the piano and the guitar. In addition, she is, together with the other members of the Pips, a prestigious inductee into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, as well as the Vocal Group Hall of Fame. Gladys Knight's business ventures. Sheila Hankerson Knight's son is the owner of a chain of chicken and waffles restaurants in Atlanta that bears Princess Knight's name. Within the greater Atlanta area, Gladys Knight and Ron Winnell's Chicken and Waffles is now open in three different locations. The Travel Channel Original Series and the MVP featured a single area as a featured destination. Authorities in Georgia